Okay, it is five o'clock. Welcome everybody. I just see a lot of blank squares, <laughs> a lot of black squares. If anyone wants to show us your cute faces, we'd love to see you. Um, but welcome to our MDT uh, meeting for the 24-25 school year. We are super excited about the program and what we have to offer next year. Um, we are gonna fly through some information. Uh, this is, the purpose of this meeting is really a broad overview of what to expect if you're doing a COPA company uh, so that you have all that information before you audition and you are ready to make an informed decision on, on participating. So we're gonna jump in and get started. My name is Katie Higby. I'm the MDT um, Academy Director for Utah COPA. And I've been with COPA for, I think next year will be my 12th year um, as a parent and as a company director and as an administrative side of things. And I love it. I love COPA. I love um, what it's done for my children and, and our family. And, and it's just a really, really great uh, place to be. So we're glad you're here and joining us. I'm going to introduce Mindy Robbins. Um, she's wearing the blue shirt. She's the only other picture on here that I can see um, or video. And I'm gonna turn the time over to her for just a couple of minutes. All right, hello everybody. Uh, we're glad you're here. I don't know how many of you are returning versus new, but we have some exciting new changes about the program we wanna tell you about. To begin with, we're just gonna start with the overall mission for those of you that are new to COPA. The mission of the company is to develop talents, confidence and performance skills while experiencing purposeful performances in a spirit of camaraderie. Um, in regard to our directors, I know that Katie introduced herself. She is part of these exciting changes. Katie is moving from the academy director to the conservatory director. And so she'll, she's done so much of the organizing. Now she'll be kind of leading the way for organization across many of the different tracks. And we're gonna talk about that today. So. Um, not only will she be the conservatory director, she'll also still remain directing. And Katie, you might need to help me with who's directing which company. And I don't know if we have our company directors here, but maybe you can unmute and just help me. If we start with Prodigy, Delane is directing Prodigy this year. Um, Delane Dayton, for those of you that don't know her, she's just an amazingly beautiful human being and she's just so gifted with kids of all ages but especially our younger kids and they're really lucky to work with her and uh premiere katie will be directing this next year and she's been directing that company for lots of years and really specializes in that age and they love her and they're lucky to have her as well and who's doing vocals with you this year uh this current year was delon i'm not sure who will do it next year probably okay. delon again Okay, and then Spire, Katie, help me out. Tiffany. She okay, Tiffany Nutter. I don't know if she's here. If you are, Tiffany, you can say hello. But Tiffany will do choreography and vocals for Spire, and she does a great job. The kids love her. She's been with us a lot of years as well. And then we have Moxie, and that is Branda Lee. And Branda Lee does vocals and choreography. Uh, Streeter, she and Delane are actually, and Delon are sisters. So we have a three Bluth team powerhouse of sisters involved in our MDT companies. Katie and I, and all of the directors are like sisters, but just from other mothers. They're actually sisters from the same mother and we're lucky to have them. And uh, let's see, Smash, Katie will be directing. And who's on vocals with you, do you know? Um, it was Tiffany this year and I'm hoping it's Tiffany next year. Okay. And then principal, Brandon Lee will be directing. Um, choreographing and directing, and CPC, uh, Delane will be doing vocals, and Susie Balser is our um, COPA Performing Company Director. Susie is the uh, a director for dance as well, the artistic director, and she's also an owner, and um, we're super lucky to have all of these MDT company directors. We just don't have, like, we have a lot of people that want to join the COPA faculty, but Honestly, getting into the company spot, our team is just tight and they love what they do and the students love them. And so we're really lucky to continually have them doing this awesome job. Okay, Katie, I'm going back to the agenda. The new program, that's what we're on next. Okay, great. So we wanted to tell you, we've been thinking a lot about this and 
just in general, it's kind of tricky because I grew up doing this, but not at this level. So I trained in music and dance, um, a little bit dance and loved musical theater, did my high school program, did musicals, and then started working professionally, went to school in it. But I never took enough dance to really be considered a dancer. And when we started this program, and with the help of Susie and Nathan, Balser owners, and with Katie, we kind of built it thinking if everybody could have, if, if I could have had more dance, what, you know, how would that have benefited my career and experience? If everybody felt more comfortable in their bodies and they could do more choreography, you know, it would they have more opportunities? But after years, I don't know if this is like 15 years, 16 years of doing COPA, something like that. What we're learning is that like dancers are dancers and movers are movers <laughs> and it's okay. Like not only is it okay, like it's important to have the variety in the industry. And the truth is like, there's a place for both in the industry. So this idea that everybody should, you know, really be dancing a lot may not be applicable for a lot of our students. So we've found over the years as we've watched that about 50% of our students really love dance. So if you look at like a Katie Higby or a Susie Balser or a Nathan Balser, they would be heavy dancers. I That would not have been what I would have gone to. I would have gone to, so just speaking of like the industry, when you get to, you know, calls in New York or regional theater calls, or sometimes even, you know, the Hale or the Sierra, they might divide it based on a mover or a dancer. And I would always go to a mover call. I wouldn't be able to do fuetes and big leaps and have massive flexibility. But as a mover, I've had a great career. Like I've ended up being able to play a lot of roles, in, dream roles in a lot of shows. And I was on stage professionally two years ago or three, 2022, whatever that is, two years ago, um, performing and doing what I love still as a mover. So what we don't want to do is feel like this is like a secondary track. It's not at all. It's accommodating the abilities that each kid is given and the interest level of what they want and a accommodating the, both of those things. So um, Katie, you can help me out with this. I just want to make sure, are, are we going to be going through the company? Yeah, we will. Okay. So I don't need to go through like what it is The in general, our MDT program is uber successful. It, every year we are having students that are succeeding as they graduate, going to collegiate programs, performing professionally, and uh, we're cranking out some incredibly talented singer, dancer, actors, but we want to accommodate the movers and those kids that don't necessarily want to put a ballet leotard and tights on and want to dive maybe a little deeper into storytelling or the character or vocal techniques and um, emphasize that part instead. And so we're offering different tracks. So we're going to look at COPA and all of the um, performing companies as COPA performing companies, and then they will have different focuses and we're calling them this year tracks. So there's a dance track. There's a music dance theater track, which is what we've been offering. There's now the musical theater track, acting track, will continue and our pop track will continue. So it can just allow kids to really customize what it is they're hoping for. Katie, do you think that I covered that okay? You did awesome, Mindy. Good job. Thanks. Okay. We can, at the end, if anybody has questions about it, we can, if we have some time, we can have Q and A's and you're always welcome to email us if we run out of time for that. Um, if you want to have more questions, if we haven't met them during this meeting. Yeah. So before I jump into like the nitty gritty of things and start sharing my screen. I just want to say, I can't see all of you because I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to be, um, but we have someone monitoring, monitoring the chat room and we will have a Q and a at the end. So um, if I won't see you if you, there's Heather, Heather's monitoring our chat. Um, so I won't see you if you like raise your hand or pop up to ask a question. So if you have a question, feel free to just interrupt, or usually I'll get to the end of a section and I'll say, does anyone have any questions? So maybe wait till then. Um, and Heather can answer anytime. And again, we'll do that Q&A at the end. But just know that I can't see you as I'm sharing my screen. And so don't think I'm ignoring you or being rude. But we're going to jump into like the 
the more detailed stuff and I'm sure there will be questions that pop up. So I am going to share my screen and also wanted to let you know that we are um, recording this meeting. So if you have friends or family that you know are interested in company, but they were not able to attend today, um, this link uh, on the Utah Copa website where, here, I'll just show you. I'm on the Utah Copa website. If you go to the auditions tab, um, this link right here where it has this Zoom link that you just joined, um, by probably tomorrow or the next day will be replaced with a YouTube link to watch this video. So if you want to go back and rewatch or you want to have your friends um, watch it, you can go there. And then don't forget to fill out this form right here uh, before you come to the audition. Um, it's really helpful for us to be able to plan ahead rather than everyone kind of signing in in real time when we get there. So um, fill out that form. Uh, but back to the website. So you're going to go to companies and musical theater. And you're going to click on American Fork Companies or AFMDT Companies Schedule. And I'm going to update that button so it will now say MDT slash MT. Um, so just that will come soon. But um, this is our 24-25 year. And this there's still a few things up in the air. Um, but I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. And I'll show you what's still up in the air and what's ready to go. So um, we start with our company schedule and tuition. Uh, for Prodigy, Premier, and Spire, not a lot is changing. In fact, nothing is changing. So Prodigy and Premier and Spire will still come on Thursdays. They'll do a two-hour company rehearsal and a one-hour vocal tech acting class. For those of you that are new to COPA, um, that vocal tech acting class is like, we call it um, private voice in a group setting. It's a very small group with a teacher. They do a, a legit song at the beginning of the year, and then they do a belt song, and then they do a monologue and an auditions unit. So it's a really personalized um, experience where they're getting really great techni technical training. We have an app where they have videos that they can watch. Um, actually, these younger companies don't watch them on their own. They'll do them in class with the teacher. And um, we have a very specific curriculum of, of technique that builds on each other. So it's it's very, um, very sound technique. We're very big on vocal health. We don't want kids damaging their voices. So that's a really great, important class that we feel really strongly about in our curriculum. For Prodigy and Premier and Spire, I'm just going to skip these older companies for a minute. They will take these dance level A, B, and C, and you can see underneath where it says Prodigy Premier Spire. So at the audition, we will place them in the appropriate dance level based on their ability. So the companies is by age, but we know, like Mindy was just saying, in a, any given company, we can have really awesome kick your face dancers and kids that are amazing vocalists and actors, but maybe can't kick their face. So we split the dance um, levels accordingly, but they will still be with similar age group. These Prodigy Premier Spire kids are all third through sixth graders. So they're still with peers that are their age. Um, so they'll feel comfortable and, and do great. Um, so this is the schedule for which um, level they get, they get placed in. For planning for fall, since you know, won't know their level for a few more weeks, you can see that level A and B are at the same time. So you'll you'll pretty much know. To be fair, or to be honest, most of our Prodigy kids, we start in level A. Um, so if you're auditioning for Prodigy, you can pretty much plan on that. Um, I do want to point out that level C has a little bit longer ballet class. So if you do get placed in level C, there will be an additional $25 charge to this tuition up here. So you can see the the 235 for those age groups. Um, and it does include the dance down below, except for that one level. Um, okay, for Moxie Smash Principal and CPC, this is where it gets complicated. Because you now have two prices, because you'll have your base price that includes your vocal tech and company rehearsal. And that is 115 for Moxie and Smash. 130 for principal and 140 for CPC because they have a longer 
um, company rehearsal, so does principal, just not quite as long as CPC. So that will be what we're calling your base tuition. Then from there, and you can see their vocal tech and company rehearsal in those squares. So you can plan your Thursdays kind of by what group you'll be in. Um, I did put down here, boys always have a scholarship. It's listed up above here for Prodigy, Premier, Inspire. Um, but for the boys, for Moxie, Smash, Principal, and CPC, we put it right there. Um, that is going to be the same no matter what track you choose. Um, so just be aware of that for the boys. For the ladies, um, basically, you'll get cast in a company and you'll get cast in a track. So we're going to skip down here now to these tracks. If you choose MT track, um, there's two, there's A and B, and those are not levels, just to be clear. It's kind of like vocal tech A and vocal tech B. They're just different times. Um, they will all be seventh through 12th graders. Um, we're still, we're going to kind of wait and see what happens at auditions. We may split them by age. We may split them by choose which one works best for your schedule. Um, we're just going to kind of wait and see. And the reason we're waiting to see is because this is the first year we're doing this. And we don't know how it will um, balance through each company. So we didn't want to say that one is for Moxie and Smash and one is for Principal and CPC and have it be imbalanced based on where people were placed for tracks. If like if there's more dance track kids in certain companies. So we're just going to leave it open for this year and, and experiment. And I promise they'll land in a great place. It's the same teachers, same curriculum, um, and it'll be awesome. So the musical theater track, what they will get is a 30 minute tap class, a one hour musical theater dance class. And what that will include is dance styles that are really applicable to musical theater. We'll study different choreographers. It will be similar to the, the styles class that we've offered the last few years. Um, it will prepare them to know terminology, to be able to walk into a dance audition and when the choreographer says certain phrases and moves, they can calculate it in their head and know what they're supposed to do with their body. It will help them to understand different styles that apply to different shows because musical theater now, you could do anything from hip hop to ballet to contemporary. And so we want them to be very familiar and comfortable with all of those styles, um, but they don't have to wear pink tights and a black Leo. They can wear joggers and leggings and biker shorts and t-shirts and feel comfortable and we will push them um there will still be a very high expectation um but it will be a mover class more than a dance class then they will have an acting class and this class is going to be divided into three terms they'll do a shakespeare unit for the first term uh uh sorry i lost my words contemporary slash film acting for term two and then term three will be improv. Improv is awesome for actors. It really frees their um, creativity. It takes down walls. It um, really opens a lot of doors as they approach scripts. So that is the MT track. So hey, can, yes, go ahead. Add just a second there. Um, we've had we've been building our acting curriculum because we have an acting track for many years now, probably six years now, and we've had. The luxury of working with Jake Suazo, who really is an expert in improv, and he's been training our faculty and writing curriculum, and it has been so fun to watch what the kids have done. We've done in the acting track, we do like an improv performance where they per perform and they do the games. And I've watched my, I've had two daughters participate in improv um, through our acting program, and I've watched their confidence grow. Their ability to stand up and speak in front of people has improved significantly um, go on dates or whatever it is. Like, it's just been really helpful in, um, building their confidence. Just wanted to throw that in there. It is a really great program. My daughter did it for a year as well and loved it. The acting program is awesome. Well, and I'm suggest what I'm saying too, is acting is awesome. And if you're looking yeah. at it, but I'm saying that we're benefiting in this musical theater track it's been built, from yeah. all the years of the acting prep that we've been doing in building this program. And so it's not like it's a brand new classes or brand new lectures. These are teachers and lectures that have been tried and true. tested. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So for tuition for Moxie, Smash, Principal, and CPC who choose the MT track, you're going to add that tuition to this MT tuition, which is 110. Um, okay. 
if you choose the MDT track, you will audition with the MDT companies, and then you will also attend the dance company auditions for placement in a level. And you can be placed in level D, level E, or level F. And these ones are levels. So they will be combined with the dance company classes, which is why we need to be very careful about placement. Um, and then this is the tuition that you would add um, to that base tuition if you choose the MDT track, which is more dance heavy. Now, I would like to point out as well, if you, um, on the form that you're gonna fill out, I showed you that link and I said, fill out this form before you come audition. Um, it will ask you which track you are auditioning for. There is also an option to say, place me where you think I will be best. So you can choose any of those three options, musical theater, MDT, or put me where you want me to be. Um, do keep in mind though, that these dance tracks are pretty advanced. So there is the possibility that we could say, you're not quite ready for the MDT track and we recommend the musical theater track. And here's some additional dance classes you can continue to take to audition again next year, but you will still be placed in company with all your peers and have that same experience. So just know as we navigate this this first year and we're not really sure how it's gonna go, um, that that is an option because you do need to be able to dance at the level of our dance company students to be able to join those classes. Um, I also want to say if you choose the MDT track but you really wanna take this musical theater acting class, um, based on room, if there are extra spots in the class, we can open those up for students who want to add that acting class. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're, if you're choosing the MDT track but you're like, man, that acting class sounds awesome, there is possibly an option to add you into that based on numbers once we see how the cards fall. Um, typically in our casting email, we will put all these questions like, um, you've been cast in MDT, but I'd like to add the acting class or things like that. So pay when you get that casting email, really read through it step by step and follow the instructions in every section because a lot of them are questions you need to answer to choose a vocal tech class or to add an add-on class. Um, so keep that in mind. I do wanna go back up to the top here and those of you who are returning will, will know this, but I just wanna remind everybody that this is a one-year commitment. So we do expect that students will be participating from July 1st of 2024 until June 30th of 2025. Um, we do hold these spots for you. We have a limited amount of spots per company we often are turning students away. Um, and so when you get cast and you accept that spot and you sign that contract, we are expecting that you will be committed for the full year. Um, so keep that in mind as you are contemplating making this decision. Um, I will say if, you, if you're like, we're gonna be moving in January and we know we're gonna be moving, come talk to us. We might be able to work something out. Like we'd rather have you for part of the year in that case than not have you at all. And often we've had, we had like three this year, just transfer to other locations. One went from AF to Draper and one went from AF to Tuacon. So that works as well. But um, a chat with us in that situation. But other than that, we want you committed for the year. We can't replace you mid-year. And then that spot is we can't fill it and we budgeted for that many students and we've already started costumes. We have already, just so you know, started making tour payments for next year. And so we just can't lose people once you've chosen to commit. So keep that in mind. Um, so any questions on these tracks and levels? I know that it's, for especially for people that are returning, it's different, it's new. Um, we're gonna work out the kinks as we go. Um, but any questions that haven't been answered in the chat or that we can answer right now for you really quick, just unmute and throw it out. And if not, I'll go on. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna go on. There are also some add-on classes. You'll see that there's still a few things in red. Um, that's because I am trying to get that information from those teachers, but um, company members can take additional classes that are offered through COPA for a discounted rate. So, um, and it's different per class. That's why I don't put the pricing on here. 
Um, Because it depends on if it's a class that only can accommodate six kids versus a class that can can accommodate 30. Um, The pricing is different, so the discount is different. Um, But here are some options of classes that people can add into as company members. Um, And then there's a note here at the bottom that says additional advanced level classes and competition teams, I should have said dance competition teams, um, are available for placement with a placement audition. So if you are really interested in more dance, um, like if you choose that MDT track, but you wanna come two or three days a week instead of just one, we do have that. We just will work with you one-on-one to build a schedule for you. Um, So just know that that is an option. Um, I'm going to move on to fees. Uh, I just wanna quickly explain how COPA does tuition and fees. Um, Every year we get the question of, why am I paying for May or June or December? We're only coming two weeks. Um, Why do I have to pay full price? We take the cost of each class, which like I said, is different for classes like vocal tech. We charge a higher rate than the dance class because there's 10 kids versus maybe 25 kids. So we take all of that and we add it all together and we literally count every single week. We look at the calendar We look at the school schedules, we look at what weeks we're gonna be opened or closed, and we count how many weeks you will be in class. And then we take that number and we divide it by 12. So you are paying the same tuition from July 1st until the next June. And you might get a different amount of things each month, but I promise you that you are only paying for what you are getting. We just, we had, Yes, go ahead. Let me just say really fast. We did, we based that on parent vote yes, a lot of I years ago. Yeah. yeah. It was something that the parents, you know, decided was easier to have a set payment every month. So you didn't have a heavier December or, um, so they just wanted the consistency. So it was a, a parent rule. Yeah. And I actually think it works really well as a parent myself. I like knowing that my tuition is going to be the same every month. That as we're approaching concerts, I'm suddenly not going to have a huge bill because we have a lot of fees, which leads me to fees. We do fees the same way. We very carefully analyze our fees year to year. I kid you not. We Hours of meetings looking at exactly how much did we spend on costumes? Exactly how much does this event cost? What do we have to pay for this? How much are we paying the teachers to be there? And we 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 are so careful with your money and we carefully analyze the fees for all of the things add it up divide it by 12 so that is where this fee number comes from per company and this covers things like extra rehearsals costumes um fittings um katie one of the biggest fees in there is the summer camps summer camps yes and that that is so instead of paying for two separate weeks of summer camp it's embedded in your monthly fee spread out throughout the year. Yeah, there's a lot of things in there. So just know that this fee is carefully analyzed and and it's even for all 12 months to help your budget and to help your planning. So when you're considering your tuition, you're gonna take, well, your tuition and fees, you're gonna take, if you're Prodigy Premier Inspire, you're gonna take this number plus the fees. If you're Moxie Smash Principal and CPC, You're going to take this number plus your track plus your fees. And just so you know how we divide it out is tuition is is your class time during the year. The fees are hard costs that we have to pay for services or items that we don't really keep. We pay out to other people. So any questions on tuition and fees? I know it's a it's a big one. Please know that we do have a scholarship application. When you um, apply or when you get your casting email, there will be a paragraph about scholarships and it will have a link that you need to fill out. And please do that if you need a scholarship. If cost is prohibitive for you, we never want it to be a reason that a student, sorry, <laughs> there it is. Hey, I made it. 30 minutes without oh, crying. Maybe. We always cry. So I'll usually it's the first 10 minutes. So I made it 10 minutes. <laughs> and it's usually me that beats her to the yeah. to the so, tears. So I'll give you a second, Katie. We're criers. 
But yeah, I what- say, we never want it to be a reason that a student can't do something they love. So if cost is prohibitive for you, look at your family budget, figure out what you can do, fill out that form. Um, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or call anyone out. I'm sorry if this applies to any of you, but it's really hard when we get to September or August and somebody's suddenly like, oh, hey, yeah, I wanted to apply for one of those scholarships. By then we've given them all out. And just so you know, it's not like we have a fund of scholarships. There's no like pool of money that we're- But if to. anybody wants to donate to that fund. Yes, <laughs> if you know people that want to donate. We've actually talked about doing benefit concerts where we could raise money to donate to that fund. But right now it's just, we just gift it. So if you are in need of a scholarship for financial reasons, pay attention in that casting email, fill it out fast, early. We do um, interview, we do an interview process where we'll talk to you. We do um, ask that people who receive scholarships be willing to help out during the year, kind of like at school when you go to back to school night and you sign up to do this party or to whatever. You know, we have little tasks and jobs. Some of them are one-time jobs. Some of them are continual things you could do throughout the year. That's really true, Katie. And that is the majority of the circumstances. However, if there are some circumstances and there have been that the family would be unable to do that, we consider just pure scholarships as well. But in general, we would love trade um, where that's possible. And I wanted to add one other thing. I would love for you guys to think outside of your home because a lot of kids who are gifted or talented or called to musical theater, their parents may not even bring them here because they don't think they can pay. So if you know a kid in your neighborhood that would love it, or you think is, you know, just called to this, because let's be honest, like musical theater runs in the blood. Like it's just, we're almost like a different breed of human (laughs) beings and we can be spotted in the grocery store or, you know, watching a sing-along movie or whatever. So if you know those kids outside of your home, invite them to come and fill out a form. There's never a guarantee, but it's worth a shot. So- Sorry, keep going, Katie. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, especially this year. If you know kids that are interested, this is the year because we're losing 12 seniors. <laughs> so we we're love we would love to get a bunch of new kids, especially if you know some high school kids. And I know the time has been prohibitive for a lot of high school kids who also participate in their high school programs. Um, but with this new MT track, it might be more of a possibility. I'm so sorry. My neighbor is edging. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to do our important dates. So let me preface this by saying this is not all the dates. These are just the most important dates for you to get on your calendar now. Um, however, in July 1st, once you've been cast, we do have a calendar download and you'll want to download that. And we'll talk about that in the post parent meeting. Um, after you've been cast, we'll give you that information. Um, But just know these are like the locked in, can't be missed, get them on your calendar today so that you don't plan a cruise or a wedding or a vacation and come to me in a year and say, oh my gosh, I had no idea I booked a trip. They are here right now. And last year, none of them changed. And I don't anticipate them changing this year, knock on wood. We try really hard to stick to our dates. We, as parents, <laughs> we want you to know the dates, to be able to put them on your calendar and to trust that they're gonna happen. So we do our hardest, we try our hardest. Um, okay, the first one is musical theater boot camp, and I'm gonna announce a change to this. Um, so this is included in your tuition and fees. You don't have to come to both. You can choose one of those weeks. So pick whichever one works best for your summer. It's the same both weeks, so you won't miss anything by choosing one over the other. But we are drastically changing what this camp looks like. So for those of you that have been with us before, it was called MDT Dance Technique, and it was all dance, 15 hours of dance for a full week. This year, we are calling it Musical Theater Boot Camp. We are only dancing for, let me think, maybe nine hours and we are including a lot more acting and vocals and we're going to be doing music theory and vocal styling and um an acting improv workshop and a lot of really cool stuff so that it is a more 
um, applicable to our MDT kids, our MT kids, and um, everyone in between. So we're really excited about this change. We think it's going to be super fun. Um, we're, we think it'll be much better for those kids that are walking in the door for the first time and get hit with a ballet technique class in the first hour. So, so we're really excited about this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is open to the public as well. So it's included in your tuition and fees at a discounted rate. But if you have friends um, in the community or at your high school that want to come do a musical theater boot camp, it is open to the public and they can register as an open student. Um, so just keep that in mind and it can be a lot of fun. Um, MDT Company Camp is July 29th through August 2nd. This is mandatory. It is not a deal breaker. Like if you already have your family reunion planned because you're new to COPA, um, it's not a deal breaker, but your kids are going to want to be there. So it's super fun. It's our kickoff for the year. We start our medleys. We start our vocal tech. We do a lot of team building and bonding. Um, so please, um, you know, put that on your calendar. The rest I won't go through other than to say we have four performance opportunities through the year, two solo showcases and two concerts. And with each concert, there's a mandatory dress rehearsal included. It's usually on a Friday or Saturday. Um, so these dates are those. So we have our fall solo showcase, our winter concert intensive, our winter concerts, um, spring solo showcase, the spring intensive, the spring concert, and then next year's auditions, whoever wants to come back for 25, 26, we already have those audition dates. So um, we, I'll just quickly talk about the four performance opportunities for those of you that are new. The solo showcases are in our COPA building. It's a really great event. It's where they share what they've been working on in their vocal technique and acting class. So it's a solo recital. At the fall solo recital, they will each perform their legit solos that's more classical styling um, at the spring solo showcase they will share a belt song and a monologue um, so again it's an individual event it's like a piano recital for voice and acting and it's really great um, we love seeing the progress that the kids make throughout the year sorry here i go again guys i just love these kids and i love watching them grow so it's I'm so a cool. crier I, cry. I, I can't talk about progress. You just laugh it's, at me. Yeah. You know, it's hard to talk about um, progress in students and confidence and doing what we love without emotion because yeah. it's emotional. Because we see it in them and it's just so fun. It's just, I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Um, okay. The winter concert, um, January 15th through 18th. Um, please note that students may need to miss school. We do try really hard to minimize how much they miss school. I promise you it's like my number one goal as I make the schedule, but there it's just impossible with how much we pay per day for the theater to not start until after school and get everyone rehearsed and do a concert. So please note that you may have to miss school. Also note that even though it lists four nights, they won't be required all four nights. Um, we send out information about six weeks before each event that will give you the exact time the exact nights that you perform and all of that information. But we do ask that you block out all four days um, so that you have that flexibility no matter what your schedule is. That's the same for the spring concert. We're blocking out May 7th through May 12th. This will actually be narrowed down even more before auditions. Um, we're just waiting on one little thing um, to be clarified. Um, so this will get down to a more of a three or four day window as well. Um, our theme for next year is Disney. Um, I love the Disney year. The medleys are so much fun. Sorry. <laughs> you guys, I'm a mess. Um, they're just great. I just love the Disney year. And the kids love it. They're just, it's so much fun. So the first concert will be individual medley shows. Um, each company does their own Disney show. Um, and then the spring concert, we actually based it on the old wonderful world of Disney. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember that every Sunday night when, you know, Walt or whoever the current CEO was would get out and host the wonderful world of Disney and they'd show different clips and we go through um, like all the different cool things about Disney. We have a, a classics medley, which is like the oldest, oldest 
old school Disney songs. We have a theme parks medley, which is the songs you hear as you're walking through Disneyland and that are attached to different rides. Um, we have a Pixar medley. Um, we have the villains medley and our heroes medley. And then we have our Disney um, on stage. So all the Disney stuff that has gone to Broadway. So that is um, a fun year. So um, for those of you that are brand new to COPA, we do a four year rotation. Um, I'll just, we do current Broadway. That's what we're in right now. Um, that uh, that's a, I'm going to say they love that year. They love every year. It's really funny because sometimes we used to think, oh, they don't really like that one. Cause it's like all the old ones, but they love it. Like they genuinely do. So we have um, hundred years of Broadway, which is like history and old school um, uh, Broadway. We have the Disney year. We have um, the current Broadway today, which is what we're doing right now. In fact, if you're new to Copa and you want to come watch our concerts on May 8th, 9th and 10th, you can see our current Broadway stuff and get a real feel for, for what we do. Um, and then the other one is jukebox and movies. So that's a fun one too. Jukebox musicals are musicals that are based on pop music, like Mamma Mia, um, Moulin Rouge, where they take already existing popular music and they turn it into a musical. So that's a fun year too, because they get to do totally different styling than what they usually do. And we love it because these kids who stay with us year after year after year, they have a huge musical theater vocabulary by the time they leave. They know so many shows and even the medleys they're not in because they're hearing it in the halls. They see it on stage. They are so familiar with all musical theater styles and genres because they've been living it. So it's really great. We love that our students are well-rounded. Okay. If you thought tears were flowing before, I should probably not talk about tours at all because I get really passionate about tours. I love our tours. I love that our tours are meaningful and very purposeful and they are experiences. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it. Um, they, they're just really great. So, okay. Smart. I can help you if you need a break. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Um, these are good tears. They really are. We just got off some of these tours and it really is just, sorry. It is. K Katie, take a second and I'll talk about it when you can chime in. <laughs> MTCA, they, um, not only are they like um, building experiences for confidence and ability, but the kids get to really bond with each other and become good friends and with their teachers. And it's just a really great experience. MTCA stands for Musical Theater Competitions of America. And we've been doing it for, um, this will maybe be our third this year, fourth year. Four. This will this be, will our, be four. our fourth year. And the kids get to prepare their medley and compete. And they get feedback from the judges, which is just awesome because they hire really qualified. And I mean, really qualified. Like, like Broadway, Disney. Broadway. Yeah. Yes. Like I remember one stood out as like he had played Aladdin on Broadway and they're giving feedback to the kids and they'll st stop and sometimes get up on the stage and work with them and have them do this section over again. And that has been really valuable. And then they also can compete in a monologue or a solo. They can add additional events and they get feedback from incredible judges, um, two or three judges in those situations as well. And then there are all sorts of workshops throughout the tour that they can go like, and sometimes things outside of their normal box, like makeup or stage management or, you know, stage combat, or they can go to, you know, dance, you know, dance workshops or vocal workshops with these incredible people. So we have just loved our MTCA experience and we've actually done really well. Not that we care about like trophies or competitions in regard to like winning, but we have represented really well and the students are prepared and this, the competition loves COPA. So it's been a really great experience. We love it. Um, principal, the NYC tour, how come CPC isn't there? Um, I don't know, but I will fix that. So it's both of them. It's principal and CPC. And this New York City tour is an incredible experience as well. We are doing MCP, right? Yeah. Katie? Okay, so MCP is stands for Manhattan Concert Productions, and we did it a lot of years until COPA hit. So I don't know if we've done like seven years or what, but it's an incredible experience where they bring Broadway directors, sometimes even the composer of the musical, 
uh, Broadway musical directors and then Broadway stars. And they do an in-concert version of like Secret Garden or if we did Children of Eden this year. We've done Crazy For You. Um, Parade. Parade, like just, okay. and then sometimes they did some medleys. We don't, we do know the show for next year. It's an uh, Anastasia. Anastasia, which will be awesome. And so that experience for the kids to be in the quote choir ensemble with other kids from across the United States in the room with Broadway professionals and then performing on a like Broadway stage at Lincoln Center um, is a really remarkable experience. It's like a pinch yourself experience. It really so. is amazing. Let me just say, so we just did Children of Eden and Stephen Schwartz, who hopefully you recognize his name, he's done so much, he did Wicked and um, Prince of Egypt and I'm trying to think what else he's done, but he's done uh, so time. many. Uh, no, no. Uh, racks, no. racks. Um, but he's phenomenal, and he was in the room like all four days, just sitting there watching the kids and talking to them and participating. And he like rewrote part of the script. I mean, it's phenomenal. And the cast were like um, people from Hamilton and Moana. The voice of Moana played one of the roles, and the kids got to meet her and talk to her, and they do a Q and A and. It's really phenomenal just to like feed off their energy, even just to see how they rehearse and how they work and how they're, they, how they respond to each other and respond to the director and how they do it full out all the time. And when they're marking, it's still kind of full out. Like it's pretty amazing. Do you it? want to keep, yeah. Do you want to keep going on America on stage or want me to yeah. do it? So let me go back to the smash tour. Um, we also go to a theme park. So just FYI. So we do a couple days of the competition and workshops and events. And then we spend a day at Disneyland as a celebration of all their hard work. And it's a, it's a uh, killer tour. Like they are going from sun up to sundown. There is not a minute of rest. Like they are just busy, busy all the time. New York is great too. They get to see a couple of Broadway shows as well. We often have students go take class at Broadway Dance Center. Um, we, you know, it's, they get to, they have some free time for some sightseeing um, that we do as, as groups. Um, but yeah, it's a great experience. Um, so yeah. Um, America on stage, we do at Lagoon and this one should say Prodigy. I think Am I on Draper? Nope, I'm not on Draper. I will fix it. I wonder if Danielle accidentally, or Danielle's on here. I don't know. I must have pasted something wrong. But this is Prodigy and Premiere Inspire. We'll go to America on stage it, at Lagoon um, on May 17th. And it's a competition. They each get to do a vocal solo. And they get feedback and, you know, the trophies and the crowns. And, and you can spend the whole day at Lagoon. This price includes the competition and the director being there and the registration, all of that stuff. But we do get discounted tickets to Lagoon so that you and your whole family can come and just enjoy the, the day and celebrate the end of the year. And we call it like a mini tour. Um, it's a bonding experience. It's fun for them since they don't get a big tour. Um, this will be our second year doing it. It's been really successful so far and uh, we love it. So uh, then the Tuacon tour, we take Moxie down to Tuacon. Um, that's a really quick tour as well, but it is also jam-packed. Like it is another one of those where we go nonstop. So they get to do two workshops with cast members from the Tuacon cast. They'll typically, actually sometimes they'll do three, but they'll do two days of workshops um, with the cast. They get to perform twice on the pre-show stage and then they get to see two shows. And they haven't announced next year's shows, but they're always phenomenal. Like this year, they get to see Anastasia and Frozen. And then next year, they'll see whatever they see next year. So um, it's super busy. They do have a little bit of free time, but not much. Um, it's a whirlwind tour. We like drive down. We're there basically 48 hours and then we drive back. Um, but it's fun and busy and they learn a lot and they get to have a lot of fun. So they're all great tours. I love tour. It's really all the things Mindy said. It's great. Um, okay, so here's our dress code. Uh, this is not super important right now. Um, you can use that next year though. And then this link on this form takes you to that auditions page that we already shared. Um, 
really quickly, I just want to, I'm going to stop sharing. Hold on. Because we don't need that anymore. And I will fix those couple of things. Honestly, you guys, I pasted the tour stuff in at like 4.30. <laughs> Brandalee is in Korea right now. And so I put that in really fast. So um, I'm not surprised there's a little mistake, but I will fix that. Okay. Um, we, as Mindy mentioned at the beginning, we have a lot of programs at COPA. So we have MDT and musical theater. We also have dance companies and dance classes. So a dance track acting, which is focused completely on acting. It's a very well-developed program. They do a lot of fun stuff. They go compete at the Shakespeare festival. And then we also have our pop program. So some of you who are new here, maybe weren't sure what you were getting into. And so I just wanna make sure you're aware of those programs. On that auditions tab on the website, you can see links for their meetings and their information in case you're like, you know what? An acting track sounds better for my kid or I think pop sounds more like what my student might want. So, and you can also attend both. You know, you're welcome to audition for multiple programs and see where it falls. Some of them can be done simultaneously. You can do dance company and an MT or an MDT company. You can do, actually I'm not, those are the only ones I know for sure you can do together. I don't wanna speak to any others because I'm not exactly sure how their schedules overlap. But my point is you can do multiple companies if you so desire. Um, but also, as we've been talking, if this doesn't sound like exactly what you're looking for, but maybe one of those other programs might be a great fit, I highly encourage you to attend those meetings, to look into those programs. They are all phenomenal. Like, they're just great. So um, the way I tell people to uh, recommend when people call me and say, we're not sure if we should do this or this, what I ask parents is to ask their to number one observe their child if especially if they're really young what are they singing around the house are they singing along with the radio or are they wanting to do you know are they singing matilda and hamilton are they wanting to be in musical theater productions or do they like to sit in their room and play guitar are they interested in songwriting um with acting if they love theater and love acting but they absolutely under no circumstances want to sing or dance <laughs> Put them in the acting program. Um, there, there's just so many things your students can choose from and we want your student to be where they can thrive and feel the most comfortable. So we will not be offended if MDT or MT is not their cup of tea. We hope we can find them a home at COPA where they feel the most comfortable and have the most fun. So just know that this is a great track and I wanna make sure you're aware of those other tracks as well. I also wanna explain a little bit about how we cast. Um, so I already showed you the website on utahcopa.com. Just go to auditions. Um, we'll have the meeting posted soon. And then there's that form to click out and it also lists the schedule. So for auditions, you will arrive. It says the check-in time. Please do not come earlier than that check-in time. We will not be ready for you and we will still be setting up. We gave 30 minutes for check-in. That's more than enough time. So you can just come during that check-in time, get checked in, and then we will start at the next time listed for the dance auditions. We will keep everybody the whole time for the dance auditions. We will teach them the dance. They can wear comfortable clothes that they can move in. We recommend no skirts or jeans, but leggings, joggers, t-shirt, tank top, something that we can see them moving, tennis shoes or dance shoes if they have them are great. Um, and they can, We'll teach them a dance. We'll have them do it. We have them do it a lot of times. We put them in lots of different groups. We'll have all the third graders together and then all the fourth graders and then we'll do all the boys and then we'll kind of put them in like, we think this might be a company. Let's see them all together. Or, you know, we'll do it by birthday. Like we'll just see them in a lot of different settings to kind of see where they best fit. And then we will start vocal auditions. And for the vocal auditions, once they have sung, they are welcome to leave. Um, so you don't need to stick around, even though it says like, I'm making up times because I'm not on the sheet. But if it says four to 5.30 vocal auditions, you don't have to stay till 4.30. You're done as soon as you sing. And we will go in the order that they checked in. As they check in, they'll be given a sign, they'll be assigned a number. So we'll dance and then we'll sing in order of that number. So you'll have an idea sort of about when your student might be done. 
We do have a holding room for parents. If you want to just hang out the whole time, you can't watch. Um, it's, it's separate just because of the way our building is set up. Um, but you are welcome to just hang out and be there as a support for them. Um, for the vocal auditions, for Prodigy Premiere Inspire, we are only doing tracks this year. So just bring a track on your phone. It should be a karaoke instrumental track that does not have any vocals on it. You'll want to have it to know when it starts, like 145. We only need to hear 30 to 45 seconds. We recommend that you sing something musical theater or Disney, but if they, but we also want them to do whatever they feel most comfortable with. So if they only know a pop song, come sing a pop song. Don't let that, don't feel like you have to learn something brand new for this. We want to see their ability, their potential, and their personality and get to know the kid. So do something that speaks to them, that they love, that they're going to be excited about doing. Don't learn something the night before or the day before. Like do something they will love to um to sing. Um, I see that question. What grades? So Prodigy Premier Spire, that is sixth grade and under. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. This is next year's grades. If they're going into those grades next year, just bring a track. If they are going into seventh through 12th grade, oh, back to the, to the track ones. Make sure you know where they start on the track and that your kid knows how to get into the phone. So often they'll come in and they'll be like, oh, I'm locked out. And then they have to run and get their mom. And, and we, we just don't have time. Them. And make sure the volume's up. Yeah. Maybe put it on a post-it note. Here's the code to my phone. Here's what time their track starts. Make sure the volume's up. And when you're choosing which part of the song to sing again, we only need 30 to 45 seconds. We usually recommend going to the end of the song. If you start at the beginning, it's usually kind of slow, maybe a little boring, not quite up yet. Um, but the last like verse and chorus is usually where we get like the really strong emotion and acting potential and great vocals. That said, if they're uncomfortable with that part, do what they're most comfortable with. We want them to be comfortable and have a great experience. If they are seventh through 12th graders, we highly suggest that they use sheet music. And this is because that is what is expected when they go to auditions. And we want them to practice that now. So you're gonna get your sheet music. You're gonna mark it with a start and an end. You do want 30 to 45 seconds again, usually that's 16 to 32 bars. But make it make sense. Don't stop in the middle of the phrase. You're welcome to finish the phrase. Um, if you have to go a little longer, just finish the phrase. But try to stick to around 30 to 45 seconds. And again, same guidelines as with the littles. Choose something they love. Choose something they're familiar and confident with. Go to the best part of the song that they feel really um, great about. Um, and then that's really it. We it we do have we will announce it. I think it's like May 26th. I should have written that down. I'm so sorry. It's the Friday. It's the Friday that Alpine School District gets out. That's our goal to have it emailed out. So I know it's about a week and a half, um, but we do take time to really carefully place people. Honestly, putting them in companies is the easy part. <laughs> the hard part is sorting out all the dance levels. So that takes us some time. And um, then we'll email you to let you know if they've been cast. Um, the way we cast is mostly by age. So what we explain to the kids is that company is company. There's no, that if any company is better than any other, it's just because they're older. Um, it's not because they're more talented necessarily. They're just older and more experienced. So you're auditioning for company as a whole to get into company. After that, it really is mostly just an age thing. I literally take everyone that auditioned and I sort them by age and birthday. And then I say, okay, we can have this many kids in CPC. One, two, three, four, five. That's how many. Well, I first I will take out anybody whose scores are not quite high enough that maybe needs a little more training and isn't quite ready for company. We'll pull them out first. And we will email you. If you don't get cast, we will email you and let you know. So you don't need to sit there and wonder, I haven't heard anything. Maybe I didn't get cast. Whether you get cast or not, our goal at Copa is the success of these kids and the opportunity for them to learn and grow. And if they are not ready for company, we don't want to put them in an experience where they're going to feel um, out of place or not prepared or frustrated that they can't keep up. And so we will recommend, we will email you and recommend what classes you could take next year to prepare to audition again the following year. But we don't want to put a student in a situation where they're gonna end up hating musical theater because they weren't quite ready. So first I'll pull out those scores and then I'll just count down. So 
if your student is like frustrated that they didn't get placed in a certain company, it has nothing to do with their talent or ability. It's really just the ages. And so we really like to keep kids with their age group. We like to make sure boys are with other boys. So we there's just a lot that goes into factoring um, who's in what companies. Occasionally, we will have a spot in a company where maybe like one ninth grader bumps up. And in that case, we do it by score. So it's initially by age and grade, and then it's by score if we do have the option to, to push a few kids ahead. Like if we don't have as many 10th through 12th graders and we can squeeze in a ninth grader, then that will be by score, not by age. Um, so that's how we cast. Um, once you're cast, we will send, a, a, like I said, it's a very long email with a lot of information and we know that. But we feel like that's better than sending 15 emails that might get lost. Like here's an email about this and here's one about this. We just put it all in one long monster email. We recommend that you read it from top to bottom, fill out all the forms, pay attention to the dates and when things are due and make your class options, make your acceptance. Then you'll get a, you'll get a uh, contract that we need you to fill out. We cannot register you until you've filled out your contract. And our goal, we register you. So our goal is to have you all registered by that first camp. Um, so by like mid-June, um, but then you won't be charged until July 1st. Um, so that's how we, we take care of casting. Make sure when you fill out your Google form for the audition, make sure there's no typos in the parent email address. That is what we will use to send the casting email. So make sure you put the email that you want us communicating with through the whole casting and registration process to make sure that we're able to communicate with you really well. Um, any questions on anything so far? Katie, I have a question um, that a parent asked about. Um, will you just quickly address if someone wants to do dance company and MDT yeah. company at COPA, if there's a discount for that? And I did clarify that we, we minimize conflicts. We really yeah. pretty much don't have conflicts between the two. Yeah, there's very minimal contact conflict between the two. Um, for Prodigy, Premier, Inspire, there will be a discount if you do dance company because you will do those dance classes instead of our MDT dance classes. For Moxie, Smash, Principal, and CPC, because they're now two separate charges, you'll just get the base charge for the company rehearsal and vocal tech, and then you'll register for dance company, and that will take care of your dance company requirements. So no, there won't, there for, for the older kids, there's no longer like a discount or a trade thing because you just, we just won't register you for the MDT track because you'll dance with dance. Does that make sense? If you're MT, then you will take those MT classes. But I guess, yes, we would probably work out a discount for the tap and the dance because they probably don't need those. So let Maybe. me- Yes, go ahead. I wanted to just add really fast uh, for any of the parents that are new and maybe you have a musical theater kid in your family and that is like outside the box for you personally and you have no clue how to choose a song. Yeah. You're scared about printing sheet music or what key. Honestly, don't stress over it. Like if they're older and a track is the best you guys can do, a track will be great. Yes. If you're younger and you can't figure out a track or sheet music, have them come in and sing You Are My Sunshine. It's just really about like showing up. So don't let it, especially in the month of mayhem, it's not worth the extra stress. Do your best. And then as they get to be a part of company, you'll have so many songs for them to choose and it'll be a breeze next year. It's just not worth stressing about this year. Yeah. Don't let it be prohibitive. Happy birthday. You are my sunshine. Baby face, a primary song. Those all work great, especially for those little kids. Older kids typically can find something. And if sheet music is prohibitive, bring a track. That's totally fine. Um, the tap thing made me think of something. I want to backtrack quite a bit, actually. For the MT track, um, there's a 30 minute tap class. If you remember, we separated that out from the dance class and put it at the end of their day because a lot of our quote non-dancers are really great tappers. So we wanted to give those kids the option of taking a more advanced tap class. So if you choose the MT track and you want an advanced tap class, 
that is still an option. And we will just figure out your situation and financially, you just won't take that 30 minute tap class and you can opt into a more advanced tap class or even the tap competition team would be great. So just know that. Um, the other thing I wanted to backtrack to was those important dates. Um, just a quick reminder that that is not every date. So those are the dates you wanna know now, but on July 1st, you'll wanna download the calendar to make sure you have all the dates for the year, especially those kids that are going to New York City tour. We have four rehearsals here in Utah on our own to prepare that are mandatory and we really need kids there so they can be prepared. Those are not on this list. They will be on the July 1st calendar that comes out. There's basically one in October, November, December, and February. And, and we just really need the kids there. So don't think those are all the dates and I'm done. Just remember that July 1st, there will be a more complete calendar. Um, these are just the most important. Okay, we're running really low on time, but I really just wanted, and I'll, I'll just say this super briefly because um, we can talk about this more at the post-parent meeting, um, but we have a deal with a school, um, Alta Independent. It's an online school that does credit recovery and also credit what they call capture, which basically means that you can get high school credit for participating at COPA. So I'll be brief since this only applies for our ninth through 12th graders, but just know that this is an option. If your kid is so busy at COPA or even doing outside musical theater shows that you want to free up a period or two in their day. Um, for example, my daughter doesn't have any first periods because she's typically in a show um, that ends at 1030 and then she doesn't get home until 1130 and then it takes her an hour just to wind down because she just did Newsies for two, three hours and her body's hyped up. And then it's really hard to get to school at 745. So she gets credit for COPA every year. And that frees up that first period every day so that she can participate in those shows and still be healthy. So um, just know that that's an option. We'll talk more about that um, at our post-parent meeting. And Mindy and I are always happy to talk about it. We're actually pretty passionate about it. We've done it with all of our kids. Um, you can get COPA credit. They also, you can take like, health and math and other things through them if you want to to do to just get ahead to free up some periods for your students during the day because we know it's hard to go to school for eight hours and then to copa for three and then have to do homework and so it's a really great option it does cost money we don't make any money off of it um we partnered with them maybe like i don't know five six years ago um mostly i ran into a friend and was complaining about something and she was like oh my gosh we run this school and we looked into it and you have to be accredited. So they and they like went through our program, analyzed all of our curriculum so that it is state accredited and it works for any school in the state of Utah because they are an accredited program. If you have more questions about that, um, you can reach out to Mindy or I. Like I said, we, we're happy to chat about it. Um, okay, I just wanted to let you know, if you have any questions, you can email info at utahcopa.com or me at katie at utahcopa.com. Although to be fair, the next two weeks with concerts is nuts. So I might not respond as quickly as you need to. So info might be a better place to, to email. Um, and then if you are cast, we do have another parent meeting on May 29th at five o'clock. It will also be on Zoom and it will also be recorded. Um, but if you can attend in person, it's great because then you're able to answer ask questions. Um, if you can't, well, again, we'll we'll email out the Zoom, the YouTube link to watch it later. Um, that e that meeting will not just be a repeat of that. I just want to make that clear. It, we go a lot more into the contract, the financial commitment, how to find the calendars, how to use the app. Um, a lot more. Like now that you're in, here's a lot more information. This is just an overview so that you know what you're getting into. Um, and we hope you'll come audition. It's a great program. They are really great kids. These are awesome students. What I, what I appreciate about our company students is that they're very, um, it's just nice for those kids to be around kids that are as passionate as they are. I know a lot of students um, who participate, I don't wanna knock any programs, 
but I know I've heard from students that when they participate, maybe at school, that it's frustrating because people aren't very disciplined or they're talking all the time. And it's nice to be at COPA where there's kids that are like there to work hard and just as passionate as they are and really want to be there and learn um, that are, and, and my daughter complains all the time. She goes to high, she's in high school. She's like, everybody makes fun of theater kids. They all knock us like theater kids are the nerds and what's wrong, you know, they, and to be in a space where you're like safe and accepted and loved and people love what you love just as much as you love it is just awesome. And we take very seriously as teachers and directors, um, the, the role that we have in building your students, your kids as human beings, not just as performers, but teaching them about dedication and commitment and working hard and showing up and being dependable for your friends and, um, you know, failing and being okay with failing and trying again and that it's okay to sing the wrong note and crack or to fall on your face because you turned weird. And like, we feel really strongly about building great people in a safe space. Um, and I just love that, that we're able to provide that for these students that are often marginalized at school because they're not the jocks or the cheerleaders or whatever they're supposed to be that year because it changes all the time. But anyway, Mindy, do you want to add anything else? And then if anyone has any questions, we no, can I just, it up. I totally comments. agree with what you just said that the truth is the majority of students probably won't pursue this yeah. collegiately or professionally. And that's not our focus. Our focus is on this being an avenue to help them build confidence and become better people. And it's it's just a matter of parents. And I know I've had four kids. You're trying to figure out like, what is it my kid loves? And so if you know this is what your kid loves, we would love your kid here in the COPA family. If you're like, I'm not sure what my kid loves and you're gonna dabble and try a year, awesome. And if you find that this isn't your kid's thing, that's okay too. It's just a matter of like finding their thing and then helping them find good places to help them develop that talent and develop their skills as human beings. So Katie did a great job. You too, I'm, Mindy. I'm proud of you. All right. right. I only <laughs> cried three times. <laughs> okay. Are we turning it to question and answers that we said? Yeah, we have about five minutes. So throw the questions out there. I see there were 37 questions in the chat. I hope they all got answered. I know Heather's little, she's a tip tappity tapper. So she probably got you all, but if there's anything that anyone wants to ask or share, we would love to hear from you for a few more minutes. Sorry, I'm sitting in my car outside a rehearsal for one of my kids because surprise, that's how this works. Yep. Um, so someone asked, are the MT and MDT kids are they together? Are they touring together? So like for the older tracks? Yeah. So will you just so hit they're, that? They're in company together still. Their Thursdays are still together. They'll be cast in Moxie, Smash, Principal, or CPC. So they're all mixed. MDT and MT kids are together. Um, and they tour together and they perform together based on their company. It's just outside of that Thursday that they then get to choose either a dance heavy track or the musical theater track. Does that clear that okay. up? Okay. Um, yes. Um, let's see. Someone, okay, I'll respond to that one. Um, I, let me just put in a little plug for Alta. Like, mm -hmm. I have two daughters who are very, very involved in musical theater and dance at my younger one does two companies at COPA, plus a dance company at school, plus musical theater at school, plus outside shows. And I get the question all the time from other mothers, like, how are you doing all of that? Alta is so helpful. So neither of my girls go to school all day. It just <laughs> doesn't happen. So we, um, we skip a class at the beginning or we skip a period at the end. And we use that time to come home and eat and reset. We've used it when they were younger for a nap, believe it or not. And then we go to four hours of rehearsal. So that is not for everyone. That is for um, people who are kind of diehards like we are. COPA also, like you can just do COPA. You can just do COPA. You don't have to be crazy and do what Katie's kids do and what my kids do. You can just do the six hours a week, which is awesome. But it, 
well, any questions that you have, send them. Go ahead. Yeah, my kids are just do COPA for the most part, and we still do Alta. And yeah. then I was going to say, just in I I say amen to the Alta experience for my um, for Miley as well, who's graduating this year. But I was going to say, I don't know if you said this or not, Katie. So I'm sorry if it's redundant. But for junior high, you can just choose a homeschool exemption. So it doesn't like True. you can still waive your kids out of um, any quote elective type of classes. So PE or fine art. art. Yeah. Yeah. Those you can just fill out a form. And then because of this yeah. way the state of Utah is, you you don't have to like report about that at all. And it's just a matter of if you feel good that they're getting fine art credit outside of school, which is a pretty easy thing to justify when they're involved in an MDT company um, or an MT track, you know? So anyway, be between seventh and eighth grade, you can just sign a form at school. It starts in ninth grade that you can choose to pay Alta for the credits and sanity if that works for your family. Exactly. And so like my daughters have never taken PE at junior high or high school because they do so much dance at COPA. Um, and yeah, for my younger one, I just sign it away for junior high. And then for high school, we, you know, we do, we do, um, oh, that's not true. They did do homeschool. They have to do fitness for life, but yeah. their dance hours at COPA counted for their PE skills and the PE elective, which was great. Yeah, yeah, Heather, you're going into more detail, which is awesome. There are Sorry. One, no, it's good. There are 1.5 credit hours required for PE to graduate in the Alpine School District. I can't speak to Drapers as well. I'm sorry. It's I'm, all of Utah. That's statewide, babe. Statewide. And, okay, great. And so that COPA will cover one of those, one full credit of those. Yeah. And then they have to do fitness for life either at school or online. It can cover all fine art credit, which is 1.5 yep. credits can vary between different. Yep. And then it can actually cover all elective credit. So by the time it's all said and done, it's something like, um, like 11 to 13 credits or something that you could use through COPA if you want to. Yeah. It's My daughter got show choir credit yeah. for being in company at COPA. Right. So yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Okay. Awesome. And, and I just want to say something that Heather said, where she's like, my kids are in shows. A lot of people are like, you can't do COPA and school. And that's not true. That's why we give you those dates right now is because your school programs probably already know the dates of their school plays. So you can get those dates and compare them to our concert dates. And then you can make an informed decision on if it works or not. Um, because most high schools and junior highs already know their performance dates for next year. Um, so anyway, that's why we pr provide them up front. Um, and it is possible to, unless they end up being the exact same dates, which sometimes does happen. And when it has happened, I've had that happen for my own student. Um, we made a choice. We either chose not to do the school program that year. Actually, what we did this year is she TA to the class instead so that she was still involved and she loved it. She was, she got to be like, clean the dances and help make props. And then another time she still did MDT, but she opted out of the performance. She still went to all of the COPA classes and um, was a swing for the rehearsals and got to do all the parts, but then she just didn't do the two nights of COPA concerts so she could do the school play. So there are options. If you find yourself in a bind, I am the most creative person on earth. I'm on kid number five through this. So I've got a lot of solutions to help make it work if you really want to do both. So, okay, we're going to need to sign off because we have another meeting starting at 630. Again, if you have questions, please email us info at utahcopa.com. Um, the YouTube link will be up on the website. I'm not going to promise by tomorrow, but for sure in the next couple of days. And so share it with your friends and family. And uh, we really hope to have you next year. It's a great program. We love it. And we love all of you. So anyway. yeah. And thanks for your interest. And We're thank you all. Have a great, great night. We'll see ya.